Hello, my name is Simon Bergebeck. I'm a partner in Boston Consulting Group, and I'm working with organizations across the Middle East on climate and sustainability topics. I'm excited to be speaking with you today, Professor Jeffrey Sachs. Simon, great to be with you. You're the president of the UN Sustain Sustainable Development Solutions Network, director of the Center for Sustainable Development at Columbia University, and commissioner of the UN Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development. So I think I'm really excited about hearing your perspectives on a green and digital global recovery. So to get us started, after Katowice uh, COP24, you said it was time to send in the engineers as the main components for solving the climate challenge were defined. And now it's about designing the solution. Uh, in your view, what is now the task for the engineers? What, what solutions are missing? What has happened in the interim is that uh, more and more economies, and it will be a significant majority of the world's economies, have committed to decarbonize by mid-century. Uh, there has been a real breakthrough of policy because we need it. Uh, we should remember that 2020, uh, which just ended, was the warmest year on record tied with 2016. This is despite it being a La Nina year, which tends to cool the earth. So we're already 1.25 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial level. We know that reaching 1.5 degrees is extremely dangerous. That is leading more parts of the world to say we're getting to zero emissions by 2050. So the European Green Deal started it off. China made a huge announcement in September uh, that by 2060 latest, uh, China would reach net zero. Japan, Korea, United Kingdom, and tomorrow, when uh, President Biden becomes president, the United States will become committed to reach net zero by 2050. So we're on a path now. It's the job of the engineers to say, which projects, is it wind, is it solar, is it carbon capture and storage, is it hydropower, uh, is it uh, making hydrogen uh, out of renewables or out of uh, hydrocarbons with the carbon capture, all of the different permutations and combinations of technology now need to get us within 30 years to zero. But that's the path that we're on. And I think it's going to be a decisive turn this year. Tomorrow also, by all press reports, when Joe Biden becomes president, one of the first things he's going to do is cancel the XL pipeline. And that is a signal, the United States, this is real. We're moving away from the fossil fuel economy. It's interesting to see that all these uh, countries are setting targets or just about to commit to a net zero target. But I would say that probably many or too few have defined a very detailed roadmap, as you then also allude to. Um, leading up to COP26, it's then interesting to talk about both what is required in terms of actually going from ambitions to actions, um, and also what type of collaboration that would be required in order to really act on climate change. So if you look at how governments are preparing for COP26, how optimistic would you be uh, that there is a willingness to cooperate and actually move from, from ambition setting to, to actual action? When, when you look at now hundreds of studies uh, that have been made, there actually is a pretty common pathway uh, that you find in virtually every study. And uh, my team just issued one we call ZCAP, Z-C-A-P, for the United States, how to reach net zero by 2050. And that is uh, we're going to electrify just about everything. We're certainly going to electrify transport uh, essentially completely one way or another. Uh, and uh, we are therefore in need of zero carbon power. And for a lot of the world, that means wind, solar, hydro, geothermal, maybe a little bit of uh, biomass uh, in some niches. Uh, it could mean carbon capture and storage in a few places, but it's clean power, it's electric vehicles, and it's synthetic fuels using the clean power to make clean hydrogen. Uh, which can be then used in various industrial processes. Uh, it means that all buildings are not going to be heated uh, in 
uh, in cold uh, climates by uh, heating oil or by, uh, by uh, natural gas, they're going to be heated by electricity. We're going to be cooking uh, with electricity rather than natural gas uh, piping. So the technology pathway is basically set. Electrification, electric transport, electric vehicles, uh, synthetic green fuels made with the clean power. The details depend on whether you're with sunshine, whether you're in a windy climate, whether you're in a mountainous uh, hydro, uh, uh, hydropower uh, environment, whether you happen to have uh, a surfeit of hydrocarbons that really could economically lead to carbon capture and storage and so forth. But I would say, in a way, that's the fine points. We're not going to be driving internal combustion engine vehicles uh, into the 2040s. We're going to be converting the global billion vehicle fleet to electric. Uh, it's going to happen with trucking as well as with light duty vehicles. Uh, so this is the kind of preparation. Now for the Gulf, <coughs> this is existential. Uh, it means the Gulf can't just sit there and say, well, we're going to sell petroleum because people are going to need it. They're not going to buy it. Uh, and so for the Gulf, it really means a, a new strategy. And I would say this is the time to make one because Every country, every region is supposed to come to Glasgow with a strategy. And uh, as tough as it is for the GCC, it's really important strategically to ask, where are we in a net zero mid-century world? What, what is our economy going to be? Fortunately, there are some very, very good answers to that. I would say a beautiful point is then also that many of those things, not all, but many of those things can be implemented and you actually save on them, right? So you save fuel, you save costs. Of course, not the full net zero pathway, but some of them. Well, there's so much energy efficiency, especially with smart grids, smart metering. That's mm -hmm. why the digital goes along with the green inherently. Digital 5G is going to be rolled out everywhere also alongside rolling out the zero carbon energy, but they're actually uh, mutually supportive. Uh, and I think that this will be part of the story that we're going to have new kinds of transport, new kinds of commerce, uh, great efficiencies in building design and so forth. So uh, there's a lot of saving uh, of resources to be had in this. So naturally, there will be a big risk of governments a risk from a climate perspective, at least, of governments losing focus on the climate part. But on the other hand, you can say that there could be the opportunity for a green recovery and a green and digital recovery. What is your view? Should we be optimistic that uh, the recovery is, is put in place in a green and digital way or that it's more focused on, I would say, more the, the, the fossil areas and, and non-green areas? I think that the fossil approach is, is over uh, and the canceling of Keystone uh, by Biden will, will show that. Uh, nobody, the bankers don't want to put in any more money into fossil projects anyway, so they're, they're not really bankable. Uh, but I think what the United States is going to focus on is uh, we'd like to build our electric vehicles, not import Chinese electric vehicles. Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of attention to the battery supply chain, to the Uh, the domestic infrastructure, to the retooling of the automotive sector, uh, and so forth. So there will be industrial policy coming up. Uh, this is clear. Uh, putting people to work uh, will be a priority in Europe. It's going to definitely be a Biden priority. Uh, it's a Chinese priority. Uh, we're going to have some frictions about uh, what those industrial policies mean, but I think they're all going to point in the same direction. Uh, as smart systems, uh, so our cars are going to be smart cars uh, as well as a digital society. So we're going to have a lot of e-commerce, uh, a lot of uh, e-everything, uh, and uh, a, a lot of domestic supply chains for the PV, for the uh, wind turbines, uh, for uh, the production of uh, the hydrogen part of the economy as well. Uh, that's where the jobs are going to be. I think that's what Biden is basically going to be unveiling for the United States in the coming weeks. Thank you. I think that is also very much what's on the agenda for Europe. Professor Sachs, I'm looking forward to seeing these expectations unfold. Thank you very much for taking the time to share with us your views today. Wonderful to be with you. Uh, thanks so much.